Good evening, sports fans. It's Jennifer Nagel with Figured Out Fitness. So, uh, wonderful day here on this wonderful Monday. <laughs> I want to give you guys a few updates before I start the topic on goal setting that works. And if you think you know what I'm going to say about goal setting, you probably don't because I have been, um, because I've been down and out, I've had a lot of time on my hands and I have literally been listening to a lecture series and a course on the psychology of sports performance. So it was really cool so far. I'm several uh, courses in or several lectures into the course and I'm even learning quite a bit more about um, goal setting. So just a quick update. I might look a little low energy because I am. If you guys know me, which many of you do, I have been ill for a couple weeks with a really lovely mystery illness, which means that um, in a lot of ways I'm feeling better, but in some ways I still uh, don't have a ton of energy. I need to take breaks. I get winded walking around the block, so you can only imagine that this is driving me nuts. Haven't been able to coach, and I miss my orange theory peeps. I even, look, look, brought my hat. So if you're out of there on Orange Theory, if you're one of my Orange Theory friends or members in East Lansing, just give me a shout. Make sure I can say hi to you all. I miss you. I see Nicole's on, so hi, Nicole. She's a fellow coach. Awesome coach, too, so take her classes. So anyway, um, I wanted to start before I got into the topic today with some really great thank yous because over these last couple of weeks, there have been a ton of people who have um, helped me out in a million different ways. and I. Um, because I've kind of been a hermit in bed, um, I haven't had a chance to publicly thank them. Plus, I always think it's important whenever you can thank somebody publicly when they've really helped out. So I see Claire and Nicole are there. They're part of the people I want to thank. Mika, Dylan, all the other um, coaches and the staff at Orange Theory because I know they've been covering my butt with classes, and I appreciate that so much. I do miss... <laughs> I really do miss uh, seeing everybody there. Um, I want to thank Susie and JC who have been my chauffeurs this weekend. Um, I had four clients compete at the Nicole Wilkins Classic this past weekend. They were wonderful too, were my posing clients and coached by other people and prepped by other people, but I helped with their posing and two were clients that I prep. And I was just so proud of each one of them. They were beautiful on stage. Um, a lot of great things that they accomplished and I just want to give them a shout out um, especially and I want to give Susie and JC a shout out I'm not able to drive yet and so they I know that they were not planning on staying for the whole competition sorry I get short of breath too so if I start breathing like a 500 pound person that's what's happening I'm not like getting terribly excited anyway um, so I wanted to say thanks to them because they stayed and took care of me and were like, <laughs> made sure I was not going to face plant, which was really important. And so congratulations also to Michelle, Heather, Kaylee, and, um, and Vicki for doing an awesome job. If you guys don't know what it's like to prep for a competition, it takes a lot of hard work and sacrifice. So I don't really care where people place because I know for several months they've been doing some really tough stuff. So I wanted to thank, like I said, my Orange Theory family, uh, Susie and JC, the competitors from this weekend, definitely my husband, and Ann and Kate, who uh, babys babysat me yesterday because Paul had to go to the cookout. So as you can see, I don't look crazy. I put on makeup so I didn't look too bad. Somebody told me the other day that my I look really tired, so well, I am. Anyway, so that's what's going on with me. I hope to find out what my mystery illness is or just get over it. I've already made a declaration that I'm going to be fully recovered in two weeks, not because science says so, but because I believe in the power of positive thinking. And this week we will find out what's going on. And next week I'm going to be 100% better. So you guys heard it here, folks. I don't need any dang doctors. I'm going to heal myself with my words and my positive thinking. So anyway, today's topic is about goal setting and prioritization because, um, well, the other thing is I've been totally binging on Netflix and there was a movie that talked about, and they, there was a line in the movie about someday I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And the person said, someday is code for never because if you don't actually put a date down on paper, if you don't actually start to set goals, you'll never do it. That really stuck with me. 
And whether you're doing fitness or something else, goal setting is really, really important. And there's so many books about goal setting. But like I said, I've been blessed with some additional free time. And I've been listening to, it's really, it's a course. It's not just a lecture, but it's a series of lectures. The course called The Psychology of Performance by Dr. Eddie O'Connor. And he is a sports um, performance psychologist, which is really good stuff. So I did find that on Audible. So if you guys are on Audible, look this up. It's been great reading so far. So um, we're talking about goal setting. Um, most of you guys have all heard of SMART goals. Well, first of all, let's talk about why it's important to set goals. Because if you don't set goals, if you don't have some sort of thing that you're working for, you're probably going to spin your wheels and you'll never really get stuff done or you'll kind of dance around it or waste time. And we're not, a, we don't want to do that, right? Life's short. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. You don't know if you're going to be hit by a mystery. <laughs> so you definitely want to set some goals. And most times you've heard me talk about SMART goals. So goals that are specific, measurable, achievable, um, relevant, and time bound. And that's kind of been the gold standard for goal setting for a long time. But one of the things that I've learned by listening to this lecture series is really talking about kind of a hierarchy of goals and multiple types of goals that help you get to your desired outcome. And of course, if you're Simon Sinek fan or if you've been on this planet, most of the time people say start with your why. But what I found really interesting about this lecture is it wasn't just start with your why, it was start with a why that's connected to your personal values. So a lot of times in fitness, people will say, well, I want to get healthy for my family, which is amazing. And don't get me wrong, that's important. But they said the most valuable whys are the ones that really connect with the individual. So it's not so much about your family. It's about what is it that is helpful to you by being healthy for your family. So maybe it's that I want more connection with my kids. So it has to be personal. So starting with that why and connecting it to your personal values and the personal benefit that you get to a goal is really critical. So I see a whole bunch of people jumping on, great. I love seeing you guys on there. If you have any questions at any time, drop a comment, or if you even have an anecdote or an example of when you set some goals or crap goals that you set that did not go so well, <laughs> sorry, I'm being a little crass, but um, put it in the comments and I'd love to hear your experiences. The next piece is there are multiple types of goals. And this was a part, and I'm nerding out on this stuff, but this is what I really love. You've got outcome-based goals, pro, uh, performance goals, and process goals. So outcome-based goals are ones like, and I'll use myself for example, I want to win first place in a national qualifier. Or if you're a runner, I might I want to you know, place top five, or I want to win something, or I want to be the top sales agent in my company. Those are outcome-based goals. Outcome-based goals are exactly what they sound like. They're based on an outcome, but they also involve other people and other competitors or other people that you might be working towards an outcome, who might be working towards a similar outcome, and you can't control them. But it is important to have an outcome-based goal because that is what drives you to really work hard. They said that's really a huge motivator. So you can't control an outcome-based goal, but it's the type of goal that helps motivate you uh, the most. Then you've got performance goals. So these are things that have nothing to do with other people, but they're kind of relative to your own past performance. So I'm gonna go back to the racing example. Performance goals are like, um, I wanna beat my time. So last year I ran a 5K and I ran it in 25 minutes. Next year I wanna run it in you know, 24 minutes. So those are relative goals or performance-based goals. They're useful for internal motivation because they're things that you can control and you can work towards those, you can beat it, you can get better every single time. Then you've got process goals, which are really focused on improving maybe a particular skill or a particular thing They happen to. Process goals typically happen in training sessions or um, skill-based type sessions, you're building skills, and they help really determine how you're able to achieve your process goals. So technically, you know, we've heard everything about SMART goals. We've also heard about, this was another thing that was really interesting. Um, Sometimes you've seen those posters that say, if you reach for the sun and you miss, you hit the moon, or I'm sure I messed that up. 
but basically they're saying set really big goals because if you don't get it, at least you've got something. Actually, the psychology says it's really discouraging <laughs> to set a goal and not get it. So yeah, you want an aggressive goal, but you also want one that's achievable too, because otherwise your motivation tanks and you don't want to keep going. So they said the key is to have all three types of those goals. So you'll have multiple process goals where you're building skill that help improve your performance goals where you're improving yourself relative to where you were, which ultimately should lead to an outcome-based goal, which helps you achieve your what. So those are kind of the three types of goals in the category of goals and how, and they talk about the importance of having all three. So if you just had uh, skill development goals, that's great, but what does that get you? I mean, do you, wh what are you changing? Um, if you only have outcome-based goals, you're going to be ticked off if you don't get first place or if you don't become the top seller, if you don't win your race or your competition. So it's really important to have all three because that keeps you motivated both in the short, medium, and long term as well. So if you had an outcome-based goal, like for me, I compete and I might only do a show once a year or twice a year. So I have to find those things that are going to keep me motivated 12 months out of the year six days a week that I'm training, et cetera. So I also wanted to really quickly touch on priorities and kind of pause. I know this is, I don't know if it's as sexy as like food or anything like that in my previous videos, but I think it is as important because without goals, you're really not, I mean, who cares if you're changing up your food or your macros or your fitness, you really have to think about what you want to do with it and commit and find that consistency and internal motivation to keep going. Um, priorities, and this is very personal for me right now because um, I'll share a story. I was actually speaking to one of my pastors about priorities, and I was talking to my husband about priorities because I, for a while I was feeling like I was drowning a little bit. So I coach at Orange Theory. I have figured out fitness. Yay. Figured out fitness. Um, I'm a mom. I am um, a leader in my church. There's a lot of things that were really important to me. And my husband is notorious and he thinks he tells me this for the first time every time. But his little story about there are that there are glass balls and there are brass balls. And you have to think about which ones the glass balls are the ones that really need your nurturing because you know, you let that fall, it breaks. So it's really about talking about what your main priorities that were. And I'm sitting here like, oh gosh, I have a business and I'm accountable to all these people and my faith and my church is so important to me. And so I had all these things that I said were glass balls. And what happened? I got sick. And immediately there's nothing like getting sick to really force you to think about what is the absolute most important. So yes, there were things that were important and I cared about them, but in terms of determining your priorities, there are things that are absolutes. I can't do anything else until my health is in order and that's gotta be my priority. So how does that relate to you? It may not be your health, although health is one of those things I think is really critical to everybody. But when you're thinking about your goals, um, if you want to, let's say someone has a goal of losing 50 pounds and getting off their blood pressure medication. Understand that that is a glass ball. You're going to have to juggle that with the other balls in your life, right? So you're going to have to decide that there are going to be some things that are more or less important than that. And you really have to make the commitment to either put some things on hold or to make room. And I will say that if you're not willing to put some things on hold when you have a new, very important goal, it probably isn't gonna work out. So to me, that's what prioritizing really means. It means to decide how important is this thing. And I do tell my clients, when we first start to work together, it's like sometimes you're going to, you know, I don't ask for perfection, perfection I ask for consistency, which means you might need to do things differently. You might need to ask for help. You might have to do, you might have to not do some things. And so those are real choices. And so when you think about priorities, think about choices, think about things that are the most important things to you and what cannot be dropped or what can be set, set aside for a brief moment of time. So I don't know, I've been talking for 13 minutes. That's so a long time on goals and priorities. So curious like what are some of the goals that you guys have right now i mean it doesn't have to be fitness related i'm just curious to see what y'all are um 
working towards. I see Brittany on there. I know you have some performance goals, if I remember correctly, for this fall. Ooh, Renee, R-E-B-T. You want to perform well, that doesn't mean that you have to versus irrational beliefs. Yes, absolutely. So Renee, great, great comment. She said, um, what does R-E-B-T stand for, Renee? She said, allows her to say that she wants to perform well, but that doesn't mean that she has to versus an irrational belief forcing me to state that I will perform well or I fail. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It totally makes sense because when you set, and that's kind of why they're talking about outcome performance and process goals. And someone had posted on Instagram, one of the athletes that I follow, she's a IFBB professional bikini competitor. She's been doing this. Ah, thanks, Renee. Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, R-E-B-T. And she put it out there. She's like, she's been a pro for a long time. She's done, I don't know, 28 shows and she's only won twice. And she had the mindset that winning meant not winning meant losing. She said she would have quit a long time ago. So oh, I'm going to have to look that up, Renee. Thank you. Um, no, oh, look, Andre, my sister's jumping in. She's a therapist, so I'm sure you guys can <laughs> chat later. Um, so she'd mentioned that if she thought that the 26 competition she did not win was losing, she would have given up a long time ago. And that's why I think that those relative goals are important. Of course, everybody wants to win, but you have to really think about other things. So I had this conversation with a couple of my competitors in the past. It's like, you can never control what the judges say. You don't know how you're going to place and you have no idea who's going to show up. I mean, you can have someone who's like genetically blessed, not one ounce of body fat, beautiful muscles, et cetera, who's also worked hard. And that doesn't take away from what you did. It just means on that day, you're not going to place first. So it's important to set other goals that you can control so that you feel that you understand what you've accomplished to get to that stage. And I hate that, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, we're all winners. But in a lot of ways, getting to the stage, if you're a competitor, is a win because there are a lot of things that you've done to sacrifice and prepare. And if you may have set goals like I want to gain five pounds of muscle or you may set goals like I want to improve my posing, or you might set a goal saying I'm not going to throw up before I get on stage, whatever it is. If you did it, great, and you have control over that result. You never have any idea what other people are going to do, and you can't base your happiness on that. So, Renee, I think that's an excellent, excellent point. And uh, it looks like Andrea will also school me on our EBT, <laughs> so I'll just check that out. Um, yeah, Brittany's got some goals for financial goals and better Spartan performance this year. So those are great examples of relative goals or even process goals um, where you're really thinking about how you can improve your own skills and your own, um, your own work, your own performance. So if anyone's brave enough, I'm curious if anyone wants to share any outcome-based goals. So some big goals that may not be 100% in your control, like, um, Sorry, I'm in competition mode, but somebody might say, I want to win my pro card, or I want to win an overall, or uh, I want to place first. So there's a Lansing, Lake Lansing Marathon. What is it? Um, marathon Relay. So maybe it's like, I want my team to place first. I don't know. I'm curious. Anybody brave enough to share their big goals? I have a big goal, but I don't know. It might be determined on other people. I want to feel better. I want to be 100% healthy. By in two weeks. And like I said, if you heard me in the earlier piece, I've been battling a mystery illness, but I have said it, I've spoken it. And technically, it's not dependent on me necessarily, or at least I don't know yet because we don't really know what it is. But I said this week, I'm going to find out what it is. And next week, I'm going to be 100% better because I do believe in the power of positive thinking. That might be a topic for another, <laughs> another um, Facebook Live. But uh, that's my outcome-based goal. So it's one big thing that maybe I don't have control over. Third cup in a trail series coming in August. Get a glass for placing on the top. So you two for three currently. Nice job, Brittany. <laughs> yeah. 
Renee, you and I should talk because part of my illness was cardiac related. So yeah, getting through life, you know, feeling good without invasive interventions. And thank you for sharing that. I mean, a lot of the stuff is really big and sometimes it's personal. And, um, you know, the other thing that the psychologist series said that I was, that I've been listening to and people vary on that. Like I know some people are really quiet about their goals and they're like, I'm just going to be quiet, put my head down and work toward it. But I guess the research really shows that you are better at achieving your goals when you share it with someone else. And I would just say, when you share it with other people, make sure you're sharing it with people who love and care and support you, because of course there's always a naysayer, but you know, we all have a tribe of folks. And I think I posted something about find your tribe. I have a blog on that, but there's always a tribe of people who you know will always have your back and are gonna be your cheerleaders and your support system. And I think it's great to share goals with those folks because at the end of the day, there are people who love and know you and will help you stay accountable to the goals that you set. So part of my tribe, like if I'm like, I don't care, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm gonna have this cookie. You know, they might look at me like, you really don't want the cookie, you just feel bad. So let's just, you know, eat your carrots instead or something like that. So there's those good people who love you, um, sometimes with a little tough love and uh, they support your goals. Any questions for me or I'd love to know, are there topics that you would like me to cover in the future? whether it's fitness, nutrition, or mindset and behavior related. I do think goal setting is important. So I did want to touch on that. And like I said, the, the lecture series that I'm listening to is called The Psychology of Performance and specifically talks about sports performance. And it's with Dr. Eddie O'Connor, and that is on Audible. Now, I'm not sure if it's anywhere else. That's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm listening to. So Brittany reminds me, I gave her some advice, make the decision you'd be proud of tomorrow. So uh, I try to follow that advice too, because I am too human. So a lot of the things that you guys all struggle with, I struggle with too. So I don't want you to think that ever in the world I am perfect. And I don't know if you noticed the little chubbiness in my face, but being sedentary for two weeks and not happy to be sitting on the couch all day has not led to the best eating. So uh, enjoying my little extra chunkiness and really looking forward to being active again. So <laughs> thanks, Brittany. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys have any other future topics, please let me know. Again, I record, I download these and you can find this on Figured Out Fitness um, YouTube channel. So you can always subscribe, Figured Out Fitness um, on YouTube. My website, figuredoutfitness.com has... Um, has blogs and other articles. You're welcome, Renee. Um, and then Instagram, Figure Out Fit, my business page on Facebook, Figure It Out Fit. I just like talking to you guys. Uh, you know, as much as um, Renee put something really kind, she said, I'm joining the forum and thank you for the inspiration. I am inspired by each and every one of you. There are some people doing some really amazing things. And I, um, you know, I think I posted today about being thankful, being an entrepreneur and other people responded, but some of the people responded like Anne and Julie, these are people that I have found inspiration from, from the last year. And I would not have taken this leap into entrepreneurship without their example. So kudos to all the boss babes and, and boss gentlemen out there who are doing their thing. And I want to say thank you. And thank you to all of you guys who tune in and listen. And hopefully this was a good topic. I'm starting to have a little bit of hard time <laughs> reading. That's been one of my weird symptoms. So when I start to do more things, I'll get a little more short of breath, but um, you guys have been great. Again, figured out fit, figuredoutfitness.com. If you do need any um, help nutrition fitness wise, I'm definitely um, continuing to take on more clients, developing some additional coaches. So there's more capacity with with our coaching and there's some really great folks who are getting ready to join our team. So if there's anything we can help you with, definitely reach out, figureitoutfitness.com and you guys have an awesome evening. Talk soon. Bye-bye.